Hi, my name's Nia, I'm from Wolfram Research and I'll be talking about how to make a demonstration for the Wolfram Demonstrations website. Thanks Anthony. Um, hi, uh, as you said, I'll be talking you through how to write a Wolfram dem demonstration. This will be uh, quite an introductory thing, so going from how to build your code initially to filling out the template and then submitting it. So the first part of this, what is a demonstration? Demonst the Demonstrations project is, um, was launched by Stephen Wolfram as a way of distributing people's interactive code to other people. So you're, what we're going to try to do here is uh, walk through creating um, an interactive application, so an interactive visualization of some concept and then putting it online so that people can view it, embed it in their websites and play with the code. The demonstrations project is available at demonstrations.wolfram.com. There's lots of great stuff on there. The things that you need, first of all, you're going to want an idea. So hopefully you've got lots of ideas from this conference. There have been some fascinating talks. Um, so try and think of something. Uh, some code next to fill it out. So using the manipulate function, um, then you're going to want a demonstration template to fill out. And finally, once this is submitted, uh, it will be using the computable document format and the CDF player so that other people can view it and interact with it. First of all, an idea. What should you write for a demonstration? Well, you can write anything. Everybody here has some specialty, some things that you're interested in. If you go onto the um, topics page of the Manipulate website, you can see we've got this big range of areas, so you could go to anything, say music, for example. Um, if you look through here, you can search by keyword, so something that you might want to write about. For example, making a keyboard. Well, some other people have done it, but there's obviously some room for you to write something. If somebody's already done the demonstration you'd like to write, then just try and frame it in a different way. Display a slightly different aspect, explain it differently. If you still need more inspiration, there's obviously all the examples existing, so we've got architecture, fitting, some silly games like Shape Descender, entirely not Tetris, um, robots, population modeling, it doesn't have to be a visualization, so we have um, solving differential equations with different methods, it can just be a text-based thing. So on to the meat of it, the manipulate. Manipulate is what you need to use to create this demonstration. Everything has to be using the manipulate function. That's what everything is framed with. It's most used for creating applications like this. This is a much more complicated one, so we can have lots of different controls and some dynamic visualization or output. This is a really complex example. You can do simple things as well, like the most basic, a slider, changing x. This is the fundamental of a manipulate. The syntax is manipulate, then the expression that you're varying, and your variable over some range. There are lots of different forms for it, so using information we can look at all the different ways of writing it. As you've seen here, so expression, u, u minimum, and u maximum. You can add step sizes or extra variables or discrete values. They're all, um, all of these are documented fully, so there are examples in the documentation. So the expression that you vary, it could be anything. Um, in this case, it's a plot, and we're just plotting a basic sign, and we're going to change um, some uh, variable in there, in this case, B. And you can add multiple controllers. So to make the more um, complex interactive applications, you just need to add more variables. So here. We're generating some initial values for a fit. So if you try and fit some function, it's fairly easy to do. You just list your ranges. So because it's just an expression, either a visualization or some text, you can insert anything in here. So say mathematics, you can expand out some polynomial, or you could manipulate an image. Uh, sometimes you have to be a little careful when you're manipulating large graphics because it does have to be redrawn every time you change your variable, so it can get quite slow. You can also vary a program. So if you want to interactively generate a program, um, see what changes, how that 
uh, varies the output. So here we could have some function that we'd then use elsewhere. You can get quite complicated with that, it gets fun. And also 3D graphics. Again, depending on what your 3D graphic is and how complex the rendering functions, it can get slow, but generally it's pretty quick. Manipulate's very clever over deciding which options you need. So you have some content, you now need to have different controls. So a slider isn't always appropriate. We have lots of different um, control types, this being the numerical slider. That will usually be automatically chosen for anything which is X from a number to another number. If you give a list, so discrete values, you can generate a drop-down menu. Um, so this is doing range 20. You can also have two-dimensional inputs. So we have slider 2D, so you want to change some vector or something. Um, you can easily move that around. Sometimes that's a lot more uh, appropriate than a slider would be. We can also have text inputs, so just an input field. This can be useful for creating forms or some kind of survey, for example. Um, so we can just enter that and it automatically updates. Uh, you just click outside the input field. So once you finish typing, uh, for example, sign, I then move my mouse outside and click. If you want to manually change it, you can use the control type option. So this is moving away from the defaults because sometimes you don't necessarily want a drop down menu. So here we have a setter bar, or you could have some drop down. There's a large number of control types. Here are just a few examples of them. So you've seen some sliders already. We have vertical and horizontal. Different setters, um, so in some kind of view. You can also have tab views if you want to have a pane where you tab through different parts of your expression. Different drop-down menus. A uh, nice feature of this drop-down is that you can have the expression that you're changing it to shown in the drop-down menu. Mouse control is nice for if you're trying to um, have people directly interact instead of having some other external controller. So you can just have clicks in here. There's this gauge where you can just interact with it. We also have um, special selectors. So things like a file name, you can have your uh, document browser automatically open up. Or color, se color setters, this is a, a color setter bar, or animators. So if you want, say, a rotating globe, for example, you could animate things automatically. What's that multi setter? Uh, which one? The second setter. This one? No, uh, setters. Oh, here. Uh, this is, I can't remember the name of that. I think it's multi setter. Let me just double check. Um, so that is, I've forgotten now. A list picker, that's what it's called. Um, so moving on to some more advanced functionality, you have your code, that would be whatever you develop, but there's also other ways of changing how Manipulate behaves. Um, localization is usually very important when you're interacting and dynamically varying lots of different things. Manipulate automatically uh, localizes any control variables. So in this manipulate, um, if we vary x here, it wouldn't change outside. You can turn it off if you want your manipulate interacting with other applications. So say you want to vary it somewhere and then elsewhere in the notebook you want the same settings. You can just use localize variables goes to false. So now we can interact. You can also initialize code, so often you need to initialize some other expressions to um, have it either run more quickly or have certain things function in the way that they're meant to. This is just using initialization goes to whatever expression. You just provide a list of different initializations. Um, it can speed things up quite a lot. And speaking of speed, there's a lot of detailed control about um, different rendering speeds. So as I said before, Using images, sometimes it takes a long time for it to update, or with 3D graphics. Um, so in this case, we have our plot 3D. Plot 3D takes quite a lot of work, so you can see the automatic behavior is to turn down the quality loads. 
So while I'm moving this slider, it looks pretty rubbish. When I let go, it goes to the full, um, full detail, so it has a proper output view. You can just stop this dynamic updating. If you decide that actually it's not really relevant that they can see it moving around, you use continuous action goes to false. And then while the slide is being moved, nothing happens, and when released, you get the full detail. You can also use performance goal if you want to specify whether you want accuracy, whether you want speed, what's more important. Sometimes a laggy controller is fine as long as you get all the detail while it's moving. So here you can see my mouse is quite delayed with moving the slider, but we get our full quality all the way through. If you want even more control over it, there's the control active option um, here. So this is a uh, direct ratio between active and inactive controls. So here we have control active. It's a third of the quality while I'm moving that controller. So this is much nicer than the original default behavior. And finally, appearance. So with appearance, you often want to make your application look good. You are generating a graphical interface for a reason. You want people to see it properly. So here we have our default behavior where um, the sliders are at the top. We can label them um, just by using appearance goes to labeled, alternatively giving an extra option of what the label for that control is. So here we're saying W from one to 10, initial value of one and label of frequency. And you can move your controls around using um, control placement, goes to left, right, top, bottom. You can specify quite detailed. Um, positioning. There are also delimiter obje objects. So these are treated just like um, a graphics construct. It's a separator so that you can have different groups of controls. So here we have our horizontal and vertical controllers separately. And finally, you can add a pane on the outside. So if you want to have a completely customized um, area, you add a pane around the outside and set its various options. So here we have, this is just our manipulate code with all the delimiters and different styles, all the way through here. And we have all our save definitions set to true, so everything will automatically load with our notebook. And there's this pane round, framed around the outside, meaning that it creates a pane and we can set up base styles for all the fonts so you have everything be consistent. We can say the background goes to black and you end up with a much nicer looking area. Um, so here we just have some uh, window editing thing, I think. So you've got your code, you've generated a ma manipulate, made it look good, now you need to turn it into a demonstration. This is just, within Mathematica, you go to file, new, and demonstration. It's that easy. Once you've done that, you end up with a template. Um, if I show you that. So you have a template with various areas to be filled out um, whenever it appears. No, okay. Gonna leave that because my computer's being fussy today. Um, so you end up with various different areas to fill out. So title, manipulate, caption, these are all the mandatory fields. So you have to fill those out for us to have the information that we need. You can also add extra things, um, so control suggestions, so you can help people to interact with your demonstration fully. There is a full page of author guidelines if you want to have a look in more detail later. Um, that just talks you through everything that you need to do. So to start with, uh, the title and your initialization. This is the first part. You need to name your demonstration. If you try and give it something um, quite descriptive, so in-depth names, but without too many words. People don't want to read a paragraph about what you're doing just in the title. So give it a brief name, usually giving it uh, keywords that people will immediately recognize so they understand what's happening. And then initialization, so set up your code ready. You just drop in the initialization code um, into this area. It's completely optional, um, but it can be useful for you to include it explicitly. And then putting in your manipulate code. Uh, in the template, we just have this description and a, and a 
template manipulates, you just put all your code in the place of that cell. And after that, we have a caption. So your caption is uh, one or two sentences. Just describe what's happening. What's your um, manipulate intended to do? What's the output? The thumbnails. Thumbnails are um, copied and pasted manipulates at a certain setting. So you want to have a thumbnail so people can see a small image of what's going to happen. You don't put an image in here. That's what happens later on in the CDF. Um, you just replace it with the manipulate itself copied and pasted. The same with the snapshots, just put a few examples of interesting ways of using your manipulate, copy and paste them in. More optional details, we have an in-depth details section. So here you can put in your references to say you used a certain book or somebody else's input, you'd reference them here and put a bit more detail. So here there's just a brief example of um, a hypercube manipulation, so talking about the maths behind it and what's actually happening. Still don't try and make it a full paper on it, just an abstract is good. And control suggestions, so sometimes it's not very clear how you can interact with something, so you, don't, you can't tell that it's actually locator pane, um, so you just show people that you can click and drag or resize things to get new interesting um, interactions. Authoring and references, tell people who you are. We want to know who wrote this so we can say you wrote something fascinating and everybody wants to go and ask you about it. Tell people. If you have other Wolfram pages, so documentation that you think might be informative to people, link it here. So this is just for Wolfram references. Um, you'd put in the details section any external references. And finally, upload it. You just submit it to the demonstrations page. There's an upload area so you can become a, a demonstration submitter. You do just enter your email address and password and drop it in. Um, this is a link directly from the template. And finally, once you've done that, it will appear on our demonstrations website using the CDF, so computable document formats. Um, people can interact with it in their browser using the CDF um, plugin or embedding. People can then go and take it and put it on their website using the, the CDF technology. So you know all of the code will be freely available to people, so if you have anything highly confidential, I wouldn't recommend making it a demonstration. Um, people can then go and use it for their own personal um, educational just uh, advancing their code. Um, and that's it for me. <laughs>